Last two days of ant hills. No. <laughs> last, <laughs> last two days. No, what am I saying last two days for? Just job. keep your feet moving. The ants won't climb up. Today, we are continuing our solar ground mount installation. Last week, we augured all the holes and we got all the poles set up perfectly where they needed to go. So this week, it's all about cementing all those poles in, removing the center blocks that were holding everything up, adding all of the Iron Ridge uh, rack mount system and installing the panels. Now, we're not hooking anything up yet. This is all just set up here physically in place. We're not gonna hook anything up until we're ready to install all of the gear inside the solar shed. But this is a huge step. It's a huge project. This, the ground mount has turned out to be just a, a massive project. We had no idea it would be this much work to build this thing. But anyway, that is what we're working on. So let's get started. ever have eight five and a half foot holes to um, put cement in just hire a cement truck yeah it's way worth your time well we looked at the problem was we had thought the holes are gonna be smaller yeah and so we already bought the cement for the smaller holes. smaller holes it just the math didn't work. If we had started from the beginning and having somebody come out and pour it, it would have been about the same cost as buying all the cement and doing it ourselves. But saving two days worth of... But saving multiple days, yeah. But then once I, like once they deliver like pallets of cement, like we can't really get it back to Lowe's, so... This is what we're stuck doing. Also, we started out with a cement mixer. Uh-huh. And we've changed to just doing it in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> Wheel barrel. Yeah, I think from all the earth bag <laughs> stuff that we did, it got some stuff stuck to the back that we didn't get cleaned off and so every time we put the cement in there it just gets stuck and then it builds up and you'd spend half more, the time scraping it. more time scraping it yeah. when you could just do it in the wheelbarrow maybe we're so. doing something wrong maybe we don't know how to use a cement mixer it's highly possible that's very possible anyway this is easier and faster so we're and it's it a now. little more manual labor i just wish we had known the right size for the holes to begin with right that would have simplified things a lot but it is what hey, it is now we know yeah. and now you know for next time all right friends we got to take a little bit of a break tired of shoveling concrete so we're going to do a different project our chicks have outgrown this stock tank that they've been in for four weeks. So we're going to go make a temporary solution until they are old enough to be with the rest of the gang. But for now, we got to unload all our supplies at the truck and get that built real fast. Pretty good progress for the day. We got this all set up. 
We got all the chicken wire in. We're gonna have to get a few more supplies to get something over the top of this to protect them from mostly the cats. Let's just be honest, the cats really like the chickens. So uh, we're gonna get something to cover that up. So we're almost there. Just got a little bit more work to do. So kind of at a standstill with the chicken little temporary run because we ran out of chicken wire. We have some other things to do. So it's back to pouring concrete, cement, concrete. I don't know what the difference is. Anyway, we're filling these holes, getting some more work done before the sun goes down.
Tell me when I'll hey, release the bird. Hey, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, oh. Hip, 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 hip,
Didn't we clean this place out? We did. Then we started working on the solar ground mount. What do we need? All right, we need our torque wrenches. We've got foot pounds, inch pounds. We need all of our, the correct socket drivers. And I think that's it. And then just a tape measure. We just gotta make sure all the rails are in the right place. It's a little too wet. I think we're gonna wait till tomorrow. It's fine. We have time tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Shiny solar array day lots. 25. I don't know. Today is an exciting day because we're going to take down the cinder block and then put the rest of the rails on. All right, so all the cinder blocks removed. We got a few more piles of dirt that we gotta level out so that when we get a ladder up here to put the panels and rails on, not tipping and not on super uneven ground and also the pallet jacks we thought that we would just be able to lift that lever up and have it slide out but it was too much pressure on there so we had to use the rubber mallet and just knock them out just so you know in case you do it this way This is our first real humidity since we've lived in Arizona and oh my gosh, I do not miss this part of Tennessee, the humidity. Whew. I don't know how you guys do it. I would like to try to test them, but we don't have a lot of sun. If we have enough sun, we could test them. This iron ridge system is pretty cool the way it's the way it's put together. You've got these huge 17 foot rails and they're attached uh, with an L bracket and uh, some U bolts. And so that you put on your pipes and you tighten that down. Then you use these, they call them UFOs, uh, universal fit objects. So on the ends, you take this cap, right? And you slide it down in there and then you use this 
to push up against the bottom of the panel to keep it from sliding down. And then you basically tighten this down and it clamps it down into place. Then after that, you just take an un, a naked one, and you just slide it down in the rail and you just slide the panel onto it and then you tighten that up and you just do that all the way down and then you do the stoppers back at the top again. So it's pretty simple. The hardest part is really getting that first panel set into place because it kind of wants to slide around and move down and you want to get it in the right spot. But once you do that, then it's just putting the panels on, tightening it down and just kind of going up the row. So it's working out pretty good so far. The other thing you have to keep in mind when you're tightening all of your bolts and screws and everything down is that they're all the specific torque specifications. So I actually had to buy an inch pound torque wrench and a foot pound torque wrench because the foot pound we had was like for our trailer tire axles and it went way too high and didn't go low enough. So we're looking at pretty low foot pounds, kind of high inch pounds. So I needed something within that range. So. This is 80 inch pounds, these UFO pieces, but then they're all different. So we've got like stuff we've written down. <laughs> We're trying to keep track of all the right torque specifications. It's a little confusing. Iron Ridge does give you all those in their installation instructions, so that's good. So we're just gonna keep putting panels on until we get to this next rail and then we're gonna do some more measurements and make sure we're still going the right direction and things are still matching up. I hope it works out. If you could be so kind as to slip hmm? I'm videoing just in case you slip down it because that'd be fun. <laughs> that would hurt really bad. Even though these are used panels and they do come with a warranty, we're just double checking to make sure that they're all outputting pretty close to the right voltage. It's kind of hard to tell because it's cloudy. They should be putting out around 33, 34, 35 volts. So we're just using our volt tester and just checking each one to make sure we don't get too far to the end of the install and find out we got to replace one, which would be a huge pain in the butt. What's it say? 34. You can also get caps for the rails keep out uh, animals, not animals, <laughs> bugs, debris, rain, unwanted stuff. most of the way done but we have a really big storm back over the other side of the mountain uh, also we're really hungry so we're gonna take a break see what happens with this storm we think it's moving away from us but we're gonna take a break we've also got an issue 
with the L bracket. The company that shipped us them sent us one piece that was wrong. It's for a two inch pipe instead of a three inch pipe. So we're gonna see if we can modify that piece and drill holes so that the U-bolt can still fit through it. Otherwise, we're not gonna get this done today. We're gonna have a whole row of panels not finished because we can't put our last rail on. So I'm hoping that we can get it modified. But for now, we've been up since six o'clock this morning and it's almost one. So we're gonna take a break and come back to it later. All right, the storm passed. We're back out here. We're gonna finish this up. Only two more rails to go. Two more rows of panels to go. What's wrong, babe? We missed one. Right in the middle. We missed a UFO. We forgot to tighten one. Dang it. Now, how are we gonna get to it? I don't know. I say we send a kid up. Do you wanna do it? If I don't break it. I think Ada could do it. She's light. I think you could walk right up the middle. Seriously. Where's our ratchet extension? Or I just, I reach over and go with like an extension arm. It almost looks like I can reach it, doesn't it? I think you could. With the tool and if you if you got one, if you got one knee on there. No, it bends in too much. Get you ready to catch her. You want me to do it or do you yeah. need to yeah. be on your belt? Okay. Do not. Okay. Can you scooch over? Is that, how's that looking when she goes? Okay. Ada, if you start to stay slip, in that seam there. This is not advised by Iron Ridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's close enough. Do not try this at home. You got your shirt. You're not going to go anywhere. No. Oh, yeah, you're, that's not doing anything. <laughs> It's a race against the storm for one million times. <laughs> Try to put half of your weight on your hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like if you were on ice. The polar bear on ice. You're a polar bear on ice. You are the panel. You are the panel. <laughs> you are one. What's the thing? You are a panel. <laughs> you are tightening yourself. Look at it, babe. You this are... is a good idea. You are. You're Please, so smart. Don't oh. let it slide down. Oh, really? You're perfect in every way. I thought this wasn't a good idea. No, it's so smart. Mom, I want to slide down here. No. Mr. Chance. <laughs> no, but if you want to hang on it, this is your last chance to hang on it. Not really. <laughs> All right, look at you. I could have done that. You're so smart, babe. Alright Ada. Are you gonna let go? 
Are you gonna drop down? You're not far from the ground, really. That's kind of far. I'm dropped. I'm fine. Ready? I'm fine. Ready? <laughs> I got you. Yeah. How fun was it? Fun. Let's hurry this up. The storm is yeah. getting closer. We gotta put on the next one. All right. So we did a thing. Good grief. That's ridiculous. It's a lot of panels. But it's going to power our whole homestead. So I think it's worth it. I think it'll be good. It just looks comically large right now. <laughs> but look what we did. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. We haven't hooked anything up yet, right? None of the panels are in series or parallel or anything like that. We don't have a combiner box yet. Everything's just kind of hanging there. We're not going to connect anything yet until we get a little further along in the inside of the solar shed so that we can be ready to connect all those and to start trenching and running our lines and all that stuff. So anyway, we'll do our ground rods and combiner boxes and all that other stuff. We'll do that soon in another video. But for now, the ground mount is finished. I'm a little overwhelmed by the size of it, to be honest. <laughs> I think it's the biggest thing we built out here. Yeah. It's bigger than the solar shed. Yep. Which is ridiculous. 